If you have one of these trucks, I would highly recommend you guys get up underneath the vehicle and check it and just make sure that they're not collapsed. So a buddy of mine reached out to me and told me that he was having issues with this 2008 LMM Duramax. This is a Silverado uh, Z71 4x4. And he's a farmer. He uses this truck for his livelihood. This truck is worked, used, and abused. My friend was driving, I believe in Kentucky, with his wife, his two young children. And he was pulling a trailer with this thing. And all of a sudden, the truck went into reduced power mode. And it can only go, I can only imagine, 20 to 45 miles an hour on the highway. So he pulled over to the side of the road. He looked at his dash and it said that his fuel filter was at 0%, which is pretty odd. So he went ahead, cracked his fuel filter, filled it up with fuel. So he spun a new fuel filter on there and he was good to go. And then lo and behold, I don't know, I can't remember, but hours down the road it happened once again. He had to do the same exact thing and he finally was able to limp it home which is horrible news. Now it's very interesting that his fuel filter would show zero as he's driving. It was good 10 minutes ago and all of a sudden nothing. But could it be an electrical issue? Could it be a fueling issue? There's all kinds of things it could be. We're gonna go ahead and check that out. So this truck has a bunch of lights on it, but it has 155,000 miles on it. And after pulling up the health report on my scan tool, I'm noticing that it's a glow plug, but that's not really the problem here. I'm gonna go ahead and click on all the cylinders. Just check the injector balance rates. Probably my first thing I'd like to do. Ideally, you're gonna wanna look for a zero, but ones and twos are fine. Negatives, negative zeros, negative ones, it's totally good. So injectors actually look perfect, man. They look great. So no issues there. At idle, we're where we need to be, 48 PSI, or 4,800 PSI and desired is exactly where it should be. So that's good. Well, I guess the biggest thing that I wanna look for really is a fuel leak or a fuel kink, maybe a kink in the line or something like that. Especially the LMM Duramaxes, they're very problematic for that. As a matter of fact, I think they did a revision or a, uh, a new part on the fuel return and supply on the on the driver's side because of that very same issue uh, right below the frame rail. I almost guarantee it, I haven't looked down there yet. We'll go ahead and put it on the hoist and check it out. But if there's a kink in the line, that's probably what's going on. Sucking that fuel from the tank using, the, of course, the fuel injection pump. This truck does not have a lift pump, which I think that's something that he should invest in. But with that kink, it is restricting the fuel flow from getting to the fuel filter, of course, and then supplying it to the injectors. I like to push on there as well, just to make sure we have some pressure, which we do. And the bleeder screw has an O-ring. Those are very common to go out. But just pushing down on it, I don't think that that's gonna be our issue. I, th I think it is holding pressure. But why is it not filling completely up with fuel? Another problematic thing with these Duramaxes, I'm gonna pull this intake and actually visually inspect the fuel hoses as well, and make sure they're not cracked, kinked. Um, you know, it's very possible that it could be sucking air. But if that's the case, then we're gonna have starting issues, and we don't, the thing fires right up. But I'm definitely gonna check it out anyways. Another thing I forgot to check, I'm gonna go ahead and check for blow-by. Not that that really has a lot to do with the fueling, but let's see what the blow-by looks like. No blow-by at all, as you guys can tell. No vapors coming out. We usually like to flip that upside down. If it's bobbling around and flying off, then we got major issues. But engine seems healthy just by visually inspecting the blow-by coming from the crankcase, so that's good. And while we're at it, let's go ahead and squeeze on that. Usually I'm looking for a rock hard upper coolant hose. Kind of a tall tale of a head gasket problem. It does look like he is a little low on coolant though, but I don't think that's gonna be the major issue. I'm just looking for other things while I have it here in the shop. Looks a little murky though. This is a very common look right here with the oil residue built up on the driver's side. Uh, this is actually your hot side of the turbo connected to your compressor housing. The reason why there's a lot of oil there is because of the PCV system. It's plumbed directly to your intake when you remove this resonator box, you'll see it. And essentially the oil vapors coming from the crankcase is introducing back into your turbo. And of course those oil vapors are gonna go throughout your entire intercooler system, which would in turn start gunking things up as well as your turbo. A lot of guys like to uh, reroute that or in other words, the PCV reroute upgrade, which basically bypasses everything in the vapors, vapor out into the atmosphere. Go ahead and shake it down really quick. Wiggle the tire left and right. Feeling pretty play in the tie rods, stuff like that. And then up and down, but it feels really, I mean, it feels good for what it is. I'm gonna go ahead and check the other side. Yeah, so we're good. I mean, there's no play in the front end. That's good. All right, let's get underneath the truck and also welcome to Michigan. This is what it all looks like 
Actually, this doesn't look too bad, believe it or not. Um, how's the transfer case looking? We're not leaking. We got a little seep here in the seal, not a big deal. Now here is the fuel line. It's kind of going back to the fuel cooler. Ooh, it looks bad. It actually doesn't look good at all. That's about ready to start leaking. Fuel lines aren't looking the best. I've seen worse, but they definitely need to be replaced. Following all of these lines to the point where we see the braided fuel line itself. Let's see here. We might have to remove this a little, oh, hang, hang on. I gotta get this on camera, guys, but the other side of this fuel line is collapsed. Wow, that squished like all the way in. What does this one look like? Yeah, guys, this is not good. This has to get replaced. There's a big old kink right here in this fuel line. I know a lot of guys in the past, I've heard this before, well, they'll actually cut it out and just run a fuel line. So just hook up a fuel line, you know, to the metal line and connect it right there. I guess that would be an easy and quick way and a very cheap way to get you by. But God forbid this guy blows a fuel line as he's going down the highway in Wyoming somewhere with his family in his trailer. And he's got to deal with that on the side of the road. So we're not going to do that to him. So honestly, I'm pretty excited to find it visually just looking at it. I would say that that's probably 95% of his issue right there. So that's pretty awesome. So I think the first thing that I'm going to do is replace that fuel line. Hopefully they have it in stock today. So we'll see. I'm going to go run to the auto parts store and see if I can pick one up. After inspecting it, both fuel lines are kinked. But in all the fuel lines, everything going to the tank needs to get replaced. That's not going to be cheap. I'll keep you guys posted after I pick up the fuel line. I'd imagine it's like 600 bucks for that part. But given the fact that both fuel lines are kinked at that point, it makes perfect sense why that fuel filter is acting up. Given when the guy's driving down the road and he goes into limp mode, he gets a little fuel light, it's going to make sense that the engine's going to sense something and put it into reduced power mode so it can't go any faster so he doesn't destroy anything else in that engine. I did park it in the garage for a day and let it sit just to see if there was any leaks going on. Looks like we have a pretty significant leak going on right here. Um, I mean, right there, it very well could be the engine oil pan leaking and or the rear main seal, which again, very common. Air filter doesn't look bad. Let's pull it out though and look at it. Looks like it was replaced not too long ago. That was very nice. So yeah, we're good on the air filter. You know guys, these fuel lines look pretty good. I mean, they're used obviously, but they don't appear to be cracked or uh, collapsed or anything like that. So this is the firewall on the driver's side. These are your return and supply lines. We're gonna go ahead and just pop these out right now. Like I said, almost guarantee you this is the problem. I'm not saying I'm gonna throw parts and hope this works. This fuel line needs to get replaced regardless. But I mean, with collapsed fuel lines, let's, let's be honest here. And of course, just a little bit of penetrating lube. And that's it. And I dropped it. These lines are nasty. Bear with me, guys. I'm going to go ahead and remove everything. And we'll go ahead and inspect it. But I'm pretty sure we're going to get bad news. Come on. These are a pain to get off a fuel cooler. Oh, there we go. Whew, almost took a bath. Ugh, hate fuel lines. This is like one of the worst jobs. Fuel lines and brake lines. Like I can, I'll, I'll remove a transmission. This is crazy. So what really sucks about this setup here is it's one fuel line, well it's two fuel lines, but the return and supply is one piece. So everything's gonna come out in sections. So I will end up having to cut it. And also it's right behind the ABS module. So it's not like it can just easily come out. I gotta think about it. When that pump is sucking that fuel all the way up to the engine, this is going to collapse. How frayed that is, that's his problem. 
That's nuts. That's not good. That's not good at all. So naturally, it should look like this, you know? Circular. <laughs> this is this is by far the worst. It's flat. It's like pancaked out, collapsed. This just is bad. And like I was saying, guys, in the beginning, this is a very common problem. If you have one of these trucks, I would highly recommend you guys get up underneath the vehicle and check it and just make sure that they're not collapsed because it's very possible that you can run into the same issue this gentleman's having with his truck. Now, as far as talking about rusty crusty, yeah. I mean, that's on his last leg. You guys can see it's just flaking right off. Definitely needs a replacement. I just got back from the auto parts store and I knew this wasn't gonna be cheap. This was close to $500, it was like four something. Look at that. What's really awesome about this is I believe they're upgraded too. The stainless steel braided, look at it, check it out. But that's what it should look like, like that, see? Not all squishy and flat. But yeah, crew cab, six and a half foot bed, so crew cab short bed. Um, I just hope they didn't give me the wrong one, because if they did, I'm gonna be upset. Because then, this will be down for a couple more days because we have to wait for parts again. But I have pretty much everything buttoned up. It's not perfect. Fitment was way off on the fuel lines. Um, I was able to get it to connect to the transmission. It took me a very long time. I know I did a lot of stuff off camera, guys, but this stuff right here is tedious and it takes forever. But let's go ahead and let her down and fire her up. Okay, so this might take me a second. I gotta prime it and cycle the key a little bit, but let's hope for the best. It's running, but there's a lot of air in the fuel right now, so it might cut off, I'm not sure. Okay, never mind. That was short-lived. Let's do it again. Okay, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna go ahead and bleed the air out of the system uh, using the Schrader valve, and then I'm also going to prime it with the uh, primer bulb on the fuel filter housing. This isn't good on the starter if I keep cranking it like that, so I'm going to do that right now. Again, I'm gonna go ahead and lift it off the ground. Check for leaks. We have to work all the air out of the fuel right now. I think we're good to go. Brand new fuel line. This is pretty awesome, guys. So I'm gonna let it run for a little bit before we take it on a test drive just to make sure everything gets worked through. But when I started it, we gotta check engine light again. I have no idea what it is, so let's go ahead and check it. So it's doing its little health scan report, but glow plug module is probably the same exact thing. The code just came back, which I could fix, but right now I just want to make sure that we fix this fueling issue. I would say the biggest thing we need to do now is just simply take it on a test drive and make sure it doesn't fall flat on its face like it did with this guy when he drove. Oh, and by the way, before I leave, injector bounce rates look great again. Um, desired fuel rail pressure is now up a little bit, which is interesting. Uh, before it was desired fuel road pressure was like 4,800 if I'm not mistaken could be wrong I'll check the footage, but it is up a little bit more Maybe I'm just weird and that's just what the ECU is calling at this current moment with the temperature that the engine is at right now But pretty interesting that it did raise a little bit. Hey, here we go But unfortunately, I do have to put it to the floor just to make sure that it's gonna maintain the fuel rail pressure And not only that we got to make sure we don't blow any fuel lines. All right, here we go all the way to the floor Okay, um, so what I will tell you, however, when I had it to the floor, it hesitated. I don't know what gear it was in, but it hesitated to shift into the next gear. That was very interesting. I wonder if I can do it again. Let me show you guys what I'm talking about. Let me slow her down. Also, it needs brakes really bad. But like I said, I don't want to see this guy stranded. We're not going to beat on my man's truck, but we got to make sure that everything is good here. So this is all the way to the floor. Good power, very good power. 
right here. It's hesitating. Oh no, it didn't do it. it. Didn't do it this time. Good, good. I don't know what that was all about. That was interesting. 26, 27,000 PSI. That's where we need to be. It's holding, it's fine. Honestly, I think the ultimate test is to hook it up to whatever gooseneck trailer he has with his livestock. Uh, I'm not saying get on it with the animals in there, but you know, drive it normally. So it's gonna take some miles in order to make sure that this truck is good to go, but he's gonna need it back. All right, so this is all the way to the floor from a dead stop. She moves good. And it didn't hesitate. I wonder what that was all about though. It hesitated to shift the first time I got on it. That was, uh, that was interesting. All right, so we just made it back home. I'm gonna go ahead and check the uh, parameters again on the scan tool, make sure we're good. But so far so good, nice test drive. He has a few things that needs to be addressed. I know I talked about that in the video, but brakes definitely need to get replaced. And uh, a few other little things to look over. Now I did run through all the functions already and we are good to go. Of course, injector balance rates are reading absolutely beautiful. All right guys, we are back. I am thoroughly impressed with how it turned out. Everything is all good to go, buttoned up, no fuel leaks, no issues. Brand new braided fuel lines in there, which is pretty awesome. Great peace of mind. He doesn't have to worry about any of those issues. But I will keep you guys posted if uh, any issues arise. Again, I'm going to go ahead and make sure he gets this thing back. I could be wrong, but I think every day this truck is down for him. He's not making money. It's one of them things. So it's important he gets this thing back on the road. But overall, not a bad truck for what he's put it through. It's actually not a bad truck. It runs really good. It's still very powerful. Absolutely no blow by. The injectors are squeaky clean. No issues there. I think really the biggest thing again is just addressing those small little issues and getting a lift pump on this truck. But guys, let me know in the comments if there's anything that I did overlook. I just wanted to make this video for you guys in case you run into this problem with fueling issues with your truck. Maybe some things to look for, um, especially for some of you guys that are sort of new into the game and don't understand a lot of what's going on here. I just wanted to go ahead and share some of what I know about these trucks, maybe able to help somebody else out. But hey guys, that is it for this video today. Thank you guys so much for stopping by. We'll see you on the next one. Stay tuned.